Hello, welcome. Today we're going to take a quick look at the multifunction display, or more commonly referred to as the MFD. So let's get started. With limited space, many labels use acronyms. So starting at the top left, we have CKLST, which simply means checklist. This is not often used by any of the flight crews I know of or have flown with, but once selected, it drops down a menu with items that you can check off to show that they have been completed. Moving to the right is TCAS, or the Traffic Collision Avoidance System. It allows you to select the area either above or below the aircraft's current altitude as being the most important and also offers expanded mode, which looks both above and below the aircraft simultaneously by predetermined altitudes. Here I've expanded selected, which shows up in the TCAS window to let you know which mode is active. Over at the four o'clock position and 3,000 feet below is an aircraft and another at one o'clock position and 3,900 feet above. The map button allows you to select what is displayed on the MFD map, which is what the picture you're looking at is based on. Currently, I have the flight plan waypoint selected with the next one being LOBS. This also then posts the waypoint along with its distance and time to cross in the upper right hand corner of the MFD. I've also selected navigational facilities like VORs and take hands, which is what these represent. You can also post airports and a variety of other things, and it all comes down to pilot preference as to what you want on your map. Next is the plan button. This is very similar to map, except it shows true north as up always. And as your aircraft representation follows the flight path that's in the FMS, you may be seeing your aircraft icon pointed left, right, down, or any such degree, and to me it is not a very intuitive mode. Once again, this is all pilot preference and oftentimes I switch between different screens in flight, depending on the information I want. But this is typically how most pilots set up their display with the aircraft icon pointed in the same direction as they are flying no matter what the heading. The chart window is a great tool to have on the MFD. Instead of having to carry the old approach plate binders and updating them monthly, some planes have electronic charts installed. So gone are the old days of carrying multiple chart binders and a case strapped to your luggage through the airport. Now you can simply select the chart you want from the onboard computer and if by magic, it appears. This is probably one of my favorite features in the modern cockpit. UPWX or Uplinked Graphical Weather is a very basic weather map that can be overlaid on your programmed flight path that also allows you to check winds aloft, the jet stream, and a variety of other weather maps that are pertinent to your flight. It was at one time cutting edge, but like everything else, it is basic at best in the year 2022. With Wi-Fi on a lot of airplanes and apps like ForeFlight, using the upweather function is akin to playing an Atari video game from the 80s compared to the graphics on a current PlayStation. Additional items on the MFD include the mile rings. This box tells you what the inner ring mileage from your aircraft is currently set at and can be adjusted to your preference. And the outer ring is simply double the inner ring's distance. Moving down to the lower left is the weather radar settings display, which is showing that it's in the standby mode and tilted up two degrees. On the bottom row, we have COM1 or communication one, which is nothing more than radio one. This airplane has four radios, two VHF and two HF radios. The green is the current frequency and the white represents the next frequency or the last frequency that you are currently on. Moving right is the NAV1 or Navigation 1 frequency display set to 114.4. Moving back to the top, HDG or heading represents the current magnetic heading of the aircraft, which is different than its actual track and at the top of the compass rows you can see the big 152. Moving right is the FMS indicator. This tells me that the MFD is currently receiving its information from the flight management system one box, which is typically the captain's side. The little arrows with numbers is the current wind vectors and speed and how they relate to the aircraft. You can also select a single vector symbol, but I find the dual vector more intuitive in flight. Straight down is the train elevation display that represents the rising train near your aircraft. This can be seen in the upper left-hand corner of the MFD as the solid and hatched green indicators. As you move towards rising terrain, it turns from green to yellow, 
and then to red to let you know you are below the train's altitude and a CFIT, which means controlled flight into terrain, is imminent without evasive maneuvers or simply you're going to crash. Immediately underneath is the DME or distance measuring equipment for the nav facilities that are turned on. Remember, nav one below and the VORs from earlier, this is where we would find our distance to a nav facility. DME1's identifier isn't transmitting, but we are 66.6 .6 nautical miles away, and DME2 is tuned to Memphis, Tennessee, MEN, which is 110 nautical miles away. Continuing below DME2 is the temperature window. So you might be asking yourself, why do we need to know three different temperatures? Each one tells us something different. The RAT, or RAM air temperature, tells us what the temperature is with air friction and compression on the aircraft surface, or basically, what its skin temperature is. We use the RAT temperature to determine if we need anti-ice systems on or not. The SAT, or static air temperature, is the undisturbed air around the aircraft, or what you would feel if you walked outside in still air. And last is the ISA, or the International Standard Atmosphere, converted to a temperature from what standard is at sea level to the flight level and whether it's warmer or colder than standard. Confused yet? Simply stated, temperature usually cools as altitude increases. So the ISA tells us if the air, or lets us know if the air is cooling at the standard lapse rate or not. It's particularly good for checking your performance in the climb because the cooler it is, the better the engines perform. So we like to see zero or a minus sign in front of a number there in that window. And with some quick math, determine where our next icing level will be. And just below that is the speed window. Again, there are multiple indications. TAS is the true airspeed, and the GSPD is the ground speed. What's missing here is the indicated airspeed that is found on the PFD. So go back and check that video out after you finish watching this one. I do give a little explanation on that. Getting back to the speeds, remember, the wind vectors above. Using simple math, if we combine our true airspeed with our 36-knot tailwind, we come up with 429, not 430. But since the aircraft is dealing with 48 knots to the right, we lose one knot of ground speed by taking a heading that is not in line with our flight path. And to round out the display, we have the DEST, D-E-S-T, or destination. On this flight, the final destination is Kilo Echo Echo Tango Airport, and we are 20 minutes away. The time to distance is helpful in planning descents in case ATC forgets about you, which does happen on occasions. Well, that concludes the MFD panel presentation. I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to answer them. If you have enjoyed this presentation, don't forget to hit the like button and consider subscribing. Until next time, stay safe and thanks for stopping by.